Good morning, chill ladies. My name is Jack Sipsky, and welcome to a game called VA11 Hall A, which actually just means Valhalla when you actually look at it. It's a game about a lot of people have been telling me to play this game ever since I played Papers Please. Um, when this game came out, because it's a it's a game that's it's a lot like Papers Please, except you're a bartender. Go away. I don't want this fucking shit to be happening to me on screen right now. No, go away. It's a game kind of like Papers, Please, in that characters show up on a screen, you talk to them, you interact with them, then you have to make them drinks and kind of like stamping the passports and figuring out what goes where, that kind of thing. But it looks really cool. I, I love the art style that's going on in this game. And you can go in here and you can actually um, turn scan lines on to make it look like a really old game. Which I love. I love when games do that. I'm not going to put them on because I think it'll make the, the capture look really weird for YouTube and it might be harder to focus on things. Because um, the art style, like this pixel art style is gorgeous. I also love how it says cyberpunk bartender action. Kind of like a Metal Gear Solid thing. Even the logo kind of looks like a Metal Gear Solid thing. But I'm excited to play this game because it has really, really high reviews on Steam. And a lot of people have really high things to say about it. So I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for playing Valhalla. This game is best played getting comfortable. Okay. Grab some drinks, some snacks, and enjoy! Okay, well I don't have those. So sit back, relax, and I hope you have a good time. Oh, thanks game. How very nice of it. <laughs> this is also one of those games with like, it's very dialogue heavy from what I've seen. So this is the thing, characters show up here and I have to mix drinks over on this side. Cool. Anna. Psst. Hey, over here. Boo! Jesus Christ, Anna! Calm down, for fuck's sake. Was that her over here? She's like Giffany from Gravity Falls. <laughs> How's that for an entrance? Come on, Joe. Look sharp. The game's starting and the player needs a good first impression of its main character. I know you served a bunch of tuxedo-clad corgis over the weekend, and the bar will eventually close. And I'll admit my little prank on you might have gone a bit overboard. But remember, life is 90% how you take it. Stay focused and look at the brighter side of things. It's good solid advice. I like this game already. I have no idea what the brighter side is, but you should totally find it. In any case, you should totally check that parcel you just got. <laughs> See ya. I'm kind of making her sound like Q from Honey Pop. <laughs> Just a dream. Hmm? There's something near the door. Chapter 1, Primera. Like a Nissan Primera. I'm more of an Almera fan, but we'll stick with it. <laughs> we'll take what we get. Your membership to Shining Fingered will automatically renew on the 17th. Make sure your account has at least $800 by then. Okay, I have zero dollars now. Um. Make sure to save your life using the Life Backup app. Oh, can we get one of those in real life? Can we just get an app, the Life Backup app? So if we do something stupid or something wrong or something we regret and want to do over again, we're just like, fuck this, and we go back. We revert back to another state and time, please. You can now browse the augmented eye. Click this message, okay. Oh, look at me, I'm adorable. And I have a little cat. I also have a pink shirt that says slut on it. <laughs> Four. So, who was that letter from? Jill, nobody. Who's four? Boss and me. Hey, I'm both of those things. I'm the boss and I all rolled into one. Welcome, Jill. Okay, we got some music going on. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's a good one right there. Ah, oh, changes when I go back. Okay. AE, the augmented eye. Mass emigration continues as Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Cyborg in heels returns next year. Do I have to click on one of these? Mass emigration continues as Quincy reveals new economic adjustments. With inflation rates among the Oh jeez, I don't want to fucking read stuff about inflation rates. No, thank you. Wonderlanders are the newest threat. Wonderlanders newest threat to your security. Beware! If you thought Alice Rabbit was good at cracking the most complicated security protocols in the world, then this new group will certainly blow your mind. 
They've yet to make an impact as big as Alice Rabbit, but they seem to be aiming very high with the recent threats issued against Prime Minister Quincy. Okay, that's a lot of conjecture and everything going on there. Um... Oh, go to work! Should I go to work? Probably. I wonder what Alma thinks of this whole thing. I don't know who Alma is. Tuesday, December 13th. Okay, so I can see the similarities between Papers, Please already. Um, they, this whole gameplay element isn't going to be the same, but the whole idea of going back to your house and having money for the end of whatever, that kind of thing. I like that. Good evening. Ah, uh, hey there, Jill. Dude, you are one handsome bat. Look at that little stubble going on. You're almost there, but nice eyeliner. Oh, hey, John. John? When will you admit you have a John face, Gil? <laughs> okay. When you let people call you Jules. Quiet. Are you okay? You look distracted. Is that a, is that a good voice for him? Because I'm gonna have to do the voices for everybody in this game. My female voices are gonna suck a big old. So give me a break. Where's Boss? Don't know. She went out to buy some stuff and. Uh, did you hear what I just told you? You said something? Yeah, that you look distracted. Very, very distracted. It's nothing. I'm just thinking about stuff and things. Okay, leave me alone. What stuff? Well, I have to pay rent by the 30th, which is always stressful and... Ah. There's also the fact that I spent a full hour yesterday apparently talking to myself. Okay, that's a bit weird. That's a little glitchy glitch going on. Not to mention the fact that two days ago, I found out the bar is at risk of closing. So not only is my life being shaken up, I'm apparently going crazy. On top of that, Neutering 4 left me with a completely empty wallet and I'll get evicted if I miss rent again. And there's all the beer cans around my apartment and... <laughs> Jill! Sorry, did, did you say something? <laughs> can you really work today? Of course I can. Let's go through the basics then, shall we? Just in case. If you can make me a piano man, I'll skip the rest, but bear with me for a second here, okay? Let's start with the sugar rush. Look for the recipe using the navigation bar in the recipe book that will show up at the top left. You can also sort drinks by flavors like sweet or types like manly, or you know if you're so cool like me, You'll be sweet and manly all at the same time. Haha, <laughs> up top, bro. Yeah, so dude. Drag the desired amount of ingredients from their cells on the right to the shaker in the center. Kill! When done, press the mix button and then press it again to stop mixing. Click the serve button or the drink itself to serve it and that'll be all. Oh, but if the drink looks messed up, you'll have to press the reset button and try again. You can press reset at any time, dude. Even while the shaker is moving. Don't be afraid to use it. Gil, I'm the one that went through the formal BTC instruction. The... the... behind... the... Behind the cocktail instruction. That's what we call classes in college. Behind the cocktails. And this should be no problem. Ugh. Gil wants either a sugar rush or a piano man. If I mess up the ingredients to drink, I can press the reset button. Okay, let's go for a sweet fucking sugar rush. Two Adelaide, one powder delta, and one kermitrine. All mixed. <laughs> sweet, light, and fruity. As girly as it gets. Sweet, girly, and happy. I like this drink. <laughs> okay, let's mix. Success! Did I make a fucking beaker? Here, happy now? <laughs> a little, but not quite little, dude. <laughs> Let's do one more. Ugh. I know, I know. Please humor me for a bit. Some drinks need to be blended. This is done by mixing it for over five seconds. You can tell it's being blended when the shaker starts moving faster. You should also- that's what I say on the dance floor. You can tell I'm blending up the dance floor when the shaker starts moving faster. Talking about my hips, little dude. Haha, <laughs> yeah, saw it. You also need to check if the drink should be served on the rocks or aged. Check ice and age buttons on the side to select the one you need. <laughs> ice age? 
It's a good movie. I recommend the first one. It's probably the best one. After that, they kind of got a little shitty, but you know, they're all still decent movies. Pretty decent. Pre pretty sick movies, dude. And in case it wasn't obvious, on the rocks means you have to toggle the ice tab. Oh! Sorry, Gillian. I thought on the rocks meant I had to throw the drink across the fucking water onto the beach. It should be noted that the station will add the ice after mixing. It's not something you should mind, though. Just a fun fact. That's a rock fact. Give me a moon blast and I'll leave you alone. Keep in mind what I said. Yeah, yeah. A moon blast! Oh, I give you a fucking moon blast, all right. That's what, that's what you do when it's point blank, pulling your trousers out and showing your bare ass to everybody. It's called a moon blast. <laughs> Let's give Gil an old moon blast. Blended drinks need to be left to mix for at least five seconds before I stop the shaker. Okay. A moon blast! A Mars blast, a Mercury blast, and a moon blast. Six, Adelheid! Jesus. No relation to the Hadron Cannon you can see on the moon for one week every month. Sweet, girly, and happy. I like to imagine that it's some sort of announcer saying the drinks. Might I just say as well, that not only is the art style lovely in this game, but the music is fucking awesome as well. I really like it. Okay, six Adelheid. Two, three, four, five, six. One powder Delta. Flanner Guide, Bronson Extract. What the fuck? Two Karmatrine. I don't know what these are. All on the rocks and blended. Okay, so I have to wait for this to spin faster. There we go. Success! No! Oh. Here, did I amuse you for long enough? <laughs> you did. Sorry to hold you. <laughs> Let's get working. Yeah. Oh, yeah, before I forget. Jesus, that's one good looking dude. Just wanna stay here longingly. Into his eyes. Forever. Hmm? You can make any drink big by doubling the amount of ingredients. But if the recipe already has over 10 ingredients, the drink is already big. Okay. So make, to make big drinks, double up ingredients, but if it has 10 ingredients, it's already big. Okay, got it. Oh, and if a recipe says it uses optional carmatrine, it means you can use none or fill it to the brim. Optional Karmatrine doesn't count towards making a big drink, of course. Karmatrine is the alcoholic factor in a drink. It doesn't change the taste, but the amount still has an effect. <laughs> if you add too much of it, the client will get drunk faster, so please be mindful of that. Are you done with the exposition? <laughs> now I am, yeah. Hey, guys. Oh, but, eh? Oh, wait, fucking wrong voice. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> I don't know. Found her while I was out shopping. Why bring her here? Well, it was either leave her outside at the mercy of society's finest, or bring her unconscious body in here. She's going to make such a ruckus when she wakes up, you know that. <laughs> That's up for you to deal with. I'll be in my office. You can't just push that responsibility onto us. We have to work. T we have work to do, damn it. There are two of you. Believe in yourselves. Uh, do you think Chief knocked her out? Nah, that's unlikely. She'd be crowing about it or taunting us if that were the case. But it's not like her to pick on such a small girl. At least not unprovoked. Yeah, you're right. We we'll just need to keep it quiet. She seems to be just sleeping soundly, not comatose. Yeah. Okay then, time to start the night. <laughs> Let's get fucking working, dudes. Yes, I'll start working while you go clean the bathroom. Uh, come again? While you spent the whole weekend and Monday doing God knows what, we've had some interesting clients come in. Dogs. Lots of them. Dogs. You're joking. Gil, you've known me for how long now? Do I look like the kind of woman who would make a joke like that? Well... So, as punishment for leaving me to deal with all of that on my lonesome, you'll be in charge of cleaning the bathrooms. I need to change her voice. Doing that kind of, ah, ah over and over again gets really tiring. Have fun. <laughs> Just that? Fine. I see no problem. Where's the cleaning stuff? Here. You brought that from home, didn't you? <laughs> that I did. <laughs> Fine. See you later, dude. With that out of the way, let's play some music in the new jukebox. 
This model needs to have all of its 12 slots filled with songs before it can start. I wonder what was the logic behind that decision? Okay! Oh, loading preview. Can I actually listen to these? Ah! Okay, this one was good, right? Wait for it! Nice! Uh, oh wait, welcome to Valhalla, I should probably put that in. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the fucking tune right there. Can I switch them around? Yeah, I can! Let's put it up there. Uh, who was I? WHO AM I?! Okay, let's just pick some fucking random ones, because I'm not sitting here all day. Nice! <laughs> Yeah! Time to mix drinks and change lives! Uh, okay, what kind of voice would this guy do? Hey you! Give me a beer! That's not really the voice he'd have, but you know what? We're sticking to it! Fuck it, we'll do it live! Oh, sure, right on it! He wants a beer, he looks quite the big guy though. Does that mean I should make a big drink? Um, by type. <laughs> Where would beer be? Oh, there it is! Okay, one Adelheid, two Bronson Extract, one Powder Delta, and two Flanner Guide, and four Carmadrine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But you said the drink was already big if I just put ten in. I'm gonna double up the thing, just because I want to see what happens. There we go. Um, all mixed, not blended. Traditionally brewed beer has become a luxury, but this one's pretty close to the real deal. Bubbly, classic, and vintage. Come on down. All right, let's mix this bad boy. Success. Oh, that looks like a frosty beer. Oh, give me a fucking ice cold beer right now. And I mean fucking at the point of almost no return between liquid and solid. So fucking cold that it makes you question if you're a polar bear or not. Here you go. Yeah, this one's good. Pretty good, in fact. Nice job. Um, thanks, I guess. You're lucky. I was in a meeting close by. This hellhole could certainly use a presence like mine. <laughs> okay. E easy does it there. I like the way it says cool right next to his head as well. Although, to be fair, work has taken me to worse hellholes, like New Jersey 3rd. Huh? What kind of work do you do, mister? You're talking to Donovan D. Dawson. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, look I'm glad I gave him that fucking name now, or that voice. Donovan D. Dawson at your service, just here to rustle up some fucking chief editor and the owner of the Augmented Eye. Nothing gets published there without my blessings. The day started with quite the interesting fellow, it seems. So, you're- you're the one to blame for the barrage of daily articles on Alice Rabbit then? Hey! People love those articles! They love reading about that urban legend! Can you blame them? The idea of some wildcard hacker working for their own goals and nobody else's. I'm bad at this accent. That's the kind of corny shit that peop- that brings in the clicks from all kinds of people. And clicks bring money, and money brings nice stuff. Like beer, and this crazy, creepy smile on my face. Stuff like cars and houses and plastic surgery for the missus and her kids. Well, I'm not complaining about the fact that you write about the hacker, just that you write about them every single day. Some of it isn't even news, just speculations or copycats. I can't read your newspaper's daily feed without running into at least one article about Alice Rabbit. Sorry, Alice underscore Rabbit, it's a bit different. Well, first of all, I don't write about it. My interns do. The poor bastards think it'll help make them full-time employees. I'm just capitalizing on this topic while it's popular. And second, you're tired of an article about a supposed hacker? But not all the daily stories about murders and about horrors? Well, I always filter out that section. I don't want to start my day scared and bitter. I have enough pressure and problems as is. I don't need to add gl to. Ugh. See, it's starting to fucking mess up my neck. 
I don't need to add Glitch City's lovely citizens to the list. <laughs> You're smarter than you look, kid. But if more people were like you, I'd go bankrupt from the lack of traffic. Still, maybe my job would be easier. How so? People get desensitized to decenti desensit people get bored of a certain kind of news after seeing it repeatedly. I just I just pay the people to write the news. I don't know fucking big words and such and things and do. When I started in this job, it only took the news of some elderly woman being killed to guarantee clicks. Now, you need an elderly woman carrying a sick baby boy getting hit by a truck. That's not enough. They need a full sob story behind it. That's true. It's like when you watch, like, those Got Talent shows or American Idol or X Factor or something like that. It's not just about the talent you have anymore. It's not just about being able to sing or fart golf balls across the room from your butthole. You have to have a sob story behind it. It's like, how, how hard has it been for you to reach this point in your life? Like, I don't care. If you're a good singer, you're a good singer. Doesn't matter if you came from a sob story or if you came from richness. Singing is singing. That's the way I like those urban legends. They're easier to write about and you can make up any shit you want. Spam them while they're hot and even people like you, people who avoid the murder stories will see them. This is very good commentary on, like, mainstream media as well. He's just saying that they flat out make up some stories sometimes just to bring in the clicks. That brings money, and like I said, money's good. Huh, I guess he has a point. What about the opinion columns? Aren't those a good source of traffic too? Oh, I hate those brats. They just write about how they're better than everyone else. They might also write about how everyone that likes a certain something should be sodomized. Oh god. So true, man. So topical and relevant. <laughs> just writing about... And like condemning people for liking certain things. Man. The worst part about that is that they know half of our clicks come from them, so they get all diva like on my ass. I think you're being too harsh. What about No wait, I was thinking of another newspaper. Yeah, the columnists on your page are annoying. <laughs> See? The kid on the restaurant crit critique column. Ah. Uh, uh shit, forgot that brat's name. Restaurant? I believe that's... That kid! Couldn't care less about his name. Anyway, his column is the least visited of the bunch. He gets less hits than the obituaries. However, he still insists that I keep paying for his adventures to outrageous restaurants. I wouldn't have any problem with that if he actually wrote about half of the places he visits. How so? He rarely writes about the places the newspaper sends him to. I've even heard he tries to get free meals by proclaiming that he's a food critic. Poor bastard only gets laughed at when he says that. I do remember some... some guy coming in here and asking for free drinks and saying he was a critic or whatever. Did he look like a fat child with a really small face? <laughs> no. <laughs> Wasn't this one then. <laughs> anyway, all this talk made me thirsty. Try to give me a beer this time, please. I gave you a beer last time and you said it was fucking good! Suck on my ass. Um, I don't- I'm probably gonna not remember any of these... Off- Off hand. And he said it was pretty good last time, so... Let's double up these ingredients again. That's eight. Two... Uh, yeah. Nice! Here. Oh, here! <laughs> ah, it's the big things that make life worthwhile. What about big troubles? Did I stutter, kid? Right. So, tell me, do you see many celebrities in this hellhole? Please stop referring to this place as a hellhole. If a place smells like soap and dog piss, I'm within my constitutional rights to call it a hellhole. <laughs> Fucking Gillian from the back. I'm doing my best here! Ah, I'm getting mixed up in my voices. Um... Hey, dude! I'm doing my best here! Thank you very much. I can't yell in that voice! I need to give Gil a different voice. Who is that? Nobody important. Hey, come on, dude! I heard that! 
Don't be offended by what I say, kid. I'm insulting the building, not you. You can think of it as a small hole. Think of it as a small hole in hell, rather than a hellish hole, if you like. Charming. This music is awesome! So, celebrities. Not really, at least not that I know of. Why? Well, to begin with, you have a serious VIP as a client, but I don't see you losing your shit. You're not making me feel special, honey. And second, because I'm always up for gossip regarding famous people. Dude, you are a fucking class A douchebag right now. Especially the red carpet kind of famous. Those folks people pretend to love but actually want to see them fall from grace. Pretend to love? Fall from grace? Why do you think that gossip about famous people always sells? People pretend that they love celebs, but what they really want is to see their idols torn down to their level. God, this is some fucking biting social commentary going on in this game. They want to see them suffer to get the comeuppance for daring to be so much more successful than them. Nah, I think gossip is just something everyone enjoys but nobody wants to admit to enjoying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to a certain extent we all love a, a little bit of gossip. What, what's the Beebs up to today? Beebs punch someone in the face, oh, juicy glory. You thought wrong, but even if you were right, it wouldn't change the fact that people love that kind of stuff. They want to escape their lives by living somebody else's. Sadly, I failed to see the appeal in that whole thing. What do I care if this guy I saw in some random movie was wearing socks with sandals or if they're dating God knows who? Come on now! Sometimes that's worth knowing! Granted, socks with sandals is practically a public indecency, but still. <laughs> see? She felt privy to it as well! I don't care about what he's wearing, but those socks and sandals he was wearing, yeesh! Oh, please! As a bartender, I bet you have a strong voyeuristic streak. Your kind always loves to hear that stuff. Just like hairdressers. This sounds hypocritical coming from you. It, even if that's the case, I don't sensationalize what people do. I don't make it more than that person you know from TV acts like a human. Sensationalize is the key word here. Just the other day, I saw this committee judge bitching over what some girl was wearing to the store. No matter what you say, these people don't exist solely to entertain the public. Preach, Jill! Preach! God, again, some really good social commentary right now. People love to tear down celebrities all the time, but at the end of the day, we're all just people. We're all just people and we all fart and shit and cry and are happy and sad. We all do the same things, just some people are in the public eye a whole lot more. They don't exist solely to entertain people, even when they're off screen. Like if an actor's on screen entertaining you, Sure, judge the acting performance, but when they're off screen, I think it's a bit more harsh to judge people that way. We're gonna have some really great debates in the comments about stuff on this. Really great commentary going on. But this problem exists because they're the ones constantly cultivating the idea that they're perfect and untouchable. Not always, some, some do. But some people who are not celebrities do that as well. Have you ever gone to your friend's Facebook feeds and they're giving you they're, they're promoting what they think their life should be, or the best parts of their life. And showing you, like, the best parts of what they do in the day, or they embellish certain things to try and make it seem like they're greater than they actually are. And you knowing them as a friend, you're kind of sitting there like, you don't, you're not that great from day to day. I know what you do day to day, you just sit down watching anime all day, eating Doritos. But then online, it's like, ooh, just went out and bought myself some new shoes, kind of thing. Um, generalizing, of course. Not everyone is like that, but we all, we all had those friends on Facebook who tried to promote a better image of themselves than what they're actually doing. So, it's not just celebrities that do that. Oh shit, did I forget to read that one? All that just leaves the public craving for those little moments when they make a mistake and fall to their level. Can't say that's a lie, but sometimes the crowd just wants to see they're human. Hey, that dude that plays the nice guy is indeed, indeed a really nice guy. That's also a thing. Sorry, I'm breaking away from the game because it's bringing up some really good topics. I remember watching some stuff with like, with like, say, take Chris Pratt for an example. I love Chris Pratt. I think his, his acting might not be the best acting mankind has ever seen, but for the type of acting that he does, he's really fucking good at it. And he's such a likable and charismatic person that 
I think that if I went into acting at all in any form, I'd love to be that kind of actor. A kind of Chris Pratt, like Ryan Reynolds, um... I don't know, who else is kind of like that? Uh, Martin Freeman, uh... Some other actors I like, like Robert Downey Jr. The kind of people that kind of exude that natural wit and... Charisma and enthusiasm and just look like really nice good people and then when you see them off screen You're kind of like please be a nice person. Please be a nice person and seeing Chris Pratt off camera He just seems like the most fucking fun person in the world to hang out with. I'm just like yes, Chris Pratt I fucking love you, dude. You're the best So to see that like hey the dude that plays a nice guy is indeed a really nice guy same with Ryan Reynolds These are the type of actors that not a lot of people have bad things to say about them and I fucking love that. I love that they just get in and they do what they want, like Chris Pratt's voice role in the Lego movie. That's exactly the type of voice role I would love to do, where you're just sitting back, you're like, Man, that dude is just fucking bubbling over with energy and enthusiasm, and you just want to sit down and just hang out with him. I feel like that's, that's a very uh, attractive trait for someone to have. Just that natural charisma and positivity and energy about them. I love that. To be fair, the gossip articles don't help sensationalizing everything. It feels like they're instigating a behavior that shouldn't be acknowledged in the first place. Yes! Yes! Preach, Jill! <laughs> you like your big words, eh, Brett? You're the one who couldn't even say desensitize a minute ago. Well, two can play that game of, uh... Uh... Hmm? Oh god, what did I do? Mm-hmm... Hey! You're a bartender, right? This dude is fucking dumb. Can't even think of words. No, I'm a lab rat hell-bent on world conquest. <laughs> sarcasm wastes my time, my money, and your energy. Refrain from using it. Hey, sarcasm is some of the best humor. I fucking love sarcasm. Anyway, I just realized that a bartender like you must have heard quite a few stories in her career. Talk about changing topics. Maybe. Why? Wouldn't you like a column talking about those? I bet they would sell quite well. It would be like the priest who published confessionary stories and then got excommunicated and lynched. People usually tell me all this stuff because they know I'm just a simple bartender. A personal stranger of sorts. We could have you ghostwriting. Half of our staff already do that. They do? You don't really think Lana Smithy is just one person, do you? Figures. Uh, anyway, eventually, the people from the stories would know it's them and blame me. Not only that, but that would hurt us as a, as a business. It would hurt me. I really like hearing clients rant about their lives. Oh, and it would hurt the clients too, I guess. Jill, you've got a good heart. Well, if you ever retire, that offer is waiting for you. I like Jill. Jill Jill's a good person. Yeah, like you'll remember me two weeks from now. Sure. Do you want another drink, Mr. Donovan? Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Did, did I say something wrong? Not at all. I just really like the sound of that. Mr. Donovan. Mr. Donovan. Is it really that special? At work, everyone calls me Mr. Dawson or boss. Boss is just a title. It's too impersonal and cold. It is? Mr. Dawson was my father and my grandfather. It's too general, but Mr. Donovan? Huh, now that's more like it. This dude really fucking loves himself. They're referring to me, to the man in front of them. Not to my family, not to my position as boss, to me. Do you want your employees to get personal with you, Mr. Donovan? Oh, God, no. But I want them to fear me. Not because I'm their boss or the name appearing on their paychecks, but rather because I strike mortal dread into them. <laughs> Jeez, I would not like to work for you. Starting tomorrow, I'm gonna make everyone call me that. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, you were asking something. What was it? Drink. Another one? Do you? Ah, yes, yes. You know what? Third time's the charm. Give me a beer. All right, uh... I can't fucking remember. Well, I can remember so remember some stuff. I don't know if it matters putting all these in first and then going back and doing them again. I don't know. We'll just do it this way anyway. Yeah. That's right, right? Boom, 
jams. One beer is open. I don't pass out. Cheers. Enjoy. Say, kid, does this bar have any investors? He didn't call it a hellhole. There was some bloke named Sven that wanted to give us money if we stamped his face all over the place. But aside from that, no. These bars are pretty much like any fast food chain. There's, there are no local investors. Why? Just wanted to let you know how lucky you bastards are. Investors suck harder than my first wife's mouth. Oh, zing. Oh, goddamn pow right in the kisser. Those bastards think they're so important because they put their money in the company. Okay, pot, kettle, black. Just keep in mind the irony that's going on. Well, that's... I mean, you give me money so you can make more. Let me do my thing and I'll give you your money. I guess that's true as well. There's so many times when... Oh, God. Oh, God, I hit my fucking desk. Um, come, come back down. <laughs> I hit the thing that raised my desk to the standing mode. So you were just disappearing. Bye. See you later. Good luck. <laughs> You're looking at the back of my Dell monitor right now. Oh god, that's funny. But yeah, <laughs> people who invest in companies, you, they, well, you see companies who are doing well. And then they invest in them, and then they want to change them. But it's like, if the company's doing well, you're obviously investing in them because of that. So let them keep doing their thing, and let them keep doing well, and you just make your money. I mean, if that's what you're really into. But no! They have to stick their noses in and start changing the silliest of stuff. What good is it- what good is it to be the boss if you still have to work for somebody else? You still have to answer to unions, the government, and those kinds of organizations, don't you? Yeah, but that's paperwork. I make somebody else do it and call it a day. These losers ask for meetings. They start talking about stuff they don't like, stuff they found offensive. And there's always that one guy or gal that says, Hey, why don't you do what other newspapers do? Recently, they told me that they needed more clicks. More clicks! I make sure to keep that- to keep stuff spicy while still keeping production quality up. But it's never enough for them. Well, you know what? They want more clicks? Ah, give them more clicks! I'll show them what happens when I do what they want and don't reject ideas. They'll know who the hell Donovan D. Dawson is! Okay, he just left. Should I be worried? Nah. <laughs> Okay, so that'd be fun if we actually go back to our house and then we see the the app, the newspaper app, the augmented eye. Oh god, this this music is a bit much. Let's go back one. This is a nice one. At least he paid before storming off. 1350, nice. Wonder what happened with Sven though. We never heard from him again. Jill? Yes. What the hell happened in that bathroom? That kind of mess usually requires you to have thumbs. Crafty dogs, I tell you. You'd think their short legs wouldn't hinder them. <laughs> the, the ceiling, the sinks, the toilets, the vents. God, they must have shit all over everything. Shh. You'll wake up the Briar Rose over there. I won't forget this. Oh, I won't forget this. Not that he won't wake them up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a client. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I... Oh, God. Big gut punch. Fast. Alright. Okay! Well, I thought after Donovan D. Dawson, I mean, Donovan D. Dawson! I thought that when he left that I'd actually be able to go back to my apartment and save and everything. I actually don't know how to save or do any of that stuff. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this episode of Valhalla here because it's been going on for quite a while and I don't want to get into another client if they're gonna keep talking a lot. I don't know how- if he's just gonna get his drink and leave or not. No idea. Really like this game though. This is really cool. I like the little stories that are going on and you meet different characters. And I like that each character has a very different look about them. Um, art style, really nice. Pixel graphics always have a special place in my heart. They just look really charming. I don't know what it is about them. They're just- cool to look at. Um, the music's good, the dialogue's good. I really like it. The gameplay, there's not a whole lot going on. It doesn't seem like it's that hard and it doesn't seem like I have a time constraint like Papers, Please would. Like how every day would start and then you have to get a certain amount done by the end of every day. This seems to be like, the better you make the drinks, the more money you get paid rather than the faster you make them and the more you get done. I don't like this song. Awesome!
systems go, baby. But I'm looking forward to playing more of this. I really want to know what you guys think of it as well. If you like it and if you think it would make a cool series. From what I've heard, though, the game is a lot longer than it seems. So, the, these types of games, I, I never know how these are going to go. Because people either love them or hate them. And I don't want to start something and then do a bunch of episodes and have it go on for like fucking 30 episodes or something like that. Especially if people don't like it. So, I, I, want, I want to work with you guys here. I want to make like the best content possible and I want to upload the best stuff possible. So, really, let, let me know what you think. I, I think it's really cool. I, I like it a lot so far. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face! Like a boss! And, high fives all right. <laughs> Well, thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes for the next video! I'm here to blow shit up today. Oh, oh Mr. One Ball! Oh, God! Oh, I almost died! Oh, I thought I was dying again! Ha! Ha! Yes! You're also gonna have to let me know how my voices are doing, because sometimes I don't know what kind of voices to give these characters.